Time to debate the issues. Join PBS NewsHour for special debate coverage. Analysis you won't find anywhere else. The first presidential debate of 2016. Live from Hempstead, New York. Tonight at 6 on Arizona PBS. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. For veterans, coming back to civilian life brings new challenges, new opportunities, and new stories of remarkable courage and accomplishment. Veterans Coming Home connects veterans and their families to resources and services for successful transition to civilian life. Explore some of the best resources and opportunities for veterans at azpbs.org slash veterans. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Love and Life After 50 Magazine, providing travel, entertainment, health, and lifestyle news for mature Arizonans for the past 35 years. Online at loveandlife.com and available at all Valley Walgreen locations. Ironwood Cancer and Research Centers, personalized cancer care through medical oncology, radiation oncology, and radiology services, focusing on emotional, physical, and social support, outsmarting cancer one patient at a time. Today's program is sponsored by RATW CPAs, Business and Financial Advisors, serving the needs of businesses and individuals since 1953. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. A protest against police brutality shut down roads this morning. How the protests impacted residents. The first debate of the presidential election is expected to draw a record-setting audience. What we can expect from the candidates. Plus, it's a new way to track the flow of rivers in Arizona in hopes of conserving water statewide. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Joey Carrera. And I'm Kate Pfeiffer. Thank you for joining us. The Mill Avenue Bridge was shut down briefly today as protesters made their way from Tempe to Phoenix and back again. Jarrett Maupin led the protest angry after the death of a 19-year-old man at the hands of Tempe police. Cronkite News reporter Alicia Gonzalez was at the protest. The organizer, Jarrett Maupin, was arrested. I was there when police told him to clear the streets. He refused. And he and two others were taken into custody. <laughs> Reverend Jarrett Maupin was arrested this morning after leading the protest to block the Mill Ave Bridge. Maupin announced his plan to shut down the bridge last week in protests of recent black shootings by police, specifically for 19-year-old Dalvin Hollins, who was allegedly shot in the back by a Tempe police officer. Racist police department that has a terrible track record, not only of killing black people, but of harassing them day in and day out on the streets of this city. Three people were arrested on site. This protester was also taken into custody. All of us must protest on a daily manner because standing in opposition against this system is what is necessary in order to change a system that's designed to kill us. Holland's biological father was arrested too, and his stepfather said he wants answers. Right, we got to go to bed and wonder what, what, what really happened. And it should not be. Every other parent get to see their parents, their child, and put them to the ground, and they know why they are fed. We don't know. Holland's grandmother fell and had to be carried the rest of the way. Tempe Police Chief Sylvia Moore tweeted, Tempe police officers engaged to provide safety for protesters. Great training leads to safe and respectful arrests when needed. Tempe police did not issue a statement after the protest, but released information through Twitter. Maupin and several protesters said they would escalate their actions until Tempe police responded their, to their concerns. In the broadcast center, Alicia Gonzalez, Cronkite News. The protest was held by nearby businesses which could have been affected. Cronkite News reporter David Caltabiano visited those local businesses to see if the protest had any impact. You know, it was actually a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. There was uh, almost more media than there were protesters. The Corner Bakery Cafe served customers without any disruption from the protest. It hasn't really affected my business at all. And uh, like I said, the protesters were very respectful. I, a few of them came in here and 
uh, got stuff to eat and drink before the protest started. And Encounter also had the same prosperity. Well, from the looks of this popular breakfast spot, you wouldn't think that was a protest happening earlier this morning. Matter of fact, one employee of Encounter told me that it's still business as usual. Well, it's not really any like kind of change. It's just quiet Monday. <laughs> and the protest didn't stop people from eating outside. Nothing too loud, nothing rambunctious or anything like that. Not that I expect that, but yeah, it's just a normal Monday. In Tempe, David Coltbiano, Cronkite News. Several people were shot this morning at a strip mall in Houston. Authorities are still trying to figure out what motivated the suspect. The gunman opened fire at passing cars around 6 a.m. Police say nine people were injured. One is listed in critical condition. The suspect was shot and killed by officers. Officials say the suspect was a lawyer who was having issues with his firm. Police found multiple weapons at the scene. The Department of Justice is awarding over $20 million to law enforcement body camera programs. Arizona is one of 32 states that will receive funding to create and enhance these programs. Attorney General Loretta Lynch says the awards will go to 106 state, city, municipal, and tribal agencies. Eyes across our country will be glued to TV screens this evening. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are set to square off during the first presidential debate of the election season. 100 million people are expected to tune in to see how the candidates address key issues and react to each other in real time. Sources from both campaigns say the candidates have spent all day in intensive debate preparation, which will continue right up until airtime. Experts say Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton needs to clear the air when it comes to her trustworthiness. And Clinton's campaign says they want Donald Trump to be held to the same standards as Clinton. I'm very concerned that Donald Trump will be graded on, the cur on a curve. Um, just because he doesn't fly off the handle in the middle of this debate does not mean that he is prepared to be president of the United States. Analysts say Republican nominee Donald Trump has yet to prove to some voters that he has the basic qualifications to serve as commander in chief. The latest CNN poll shows Trump trails Clinton by two points among likely voters. His campaign manager says the Republican nominee plans to sway viewers and gain votes with his ability to connect with people. People really gravitate toward his brand of authenticity and the way he's been able to connect with people very naturally. And you can catch the debate right here on Arizona PBS. Starting at 6 p.m., PBS NewsHour will have the full live debate. At 8 p.m., a special episode of Arizona Horizon will have in-depth analysis from host Ted Simons and local experts. Native Americans will likely be watching the debate tonight along with the rest of the nation, but tribal leaders who met in Washington today say they will be looking for a continuation of the Obama administration's relationship with the tribes. Cronkite News reporter Ali Bice has the story from our Washington Bureau. Today was the final White House Tribal Nations Conference. Tribal leaders gathered to give their thanks to the Obama administration's efforts to improve tribal nation and government relations. Tribal leaders today gave President Barack Obama high marks for reaching out to Native nations during his administration, which started the White House Tribal Nations Conference eight years ago. The president told tribal leaders that much has been accomplished in those eight years, but much remains to be done. I believe that, yes, our progress depends in part on who sits in the Oval Office and whether they're setting the right priorities. But lasting progress depends on all of us, not just who the president is. But leaders of the Navajo Nation said they are concerned about the next president and whether he or she will continue the Obama administration's policies. Uh, a candidate that doesn't really quite understand what government to government means and what nation to nation means because we were here way before the U.S. was ever established, and that needs to be clearly understood by both candidates. Begay said tribal leaders will be looking to tonight's presidential debate for clues. And we want to see if they are, if one of them really understand clearly what it means, uh, government to government and nation to nation, trust, responsibility, and treaty obligations. But some at least already know who they're voting for. And so I'm looking forward to a, a Clinton administration, if I can say that. Uh, because I think uh, Hillary will bring, uh, continue the momentum that uh, President Obama has, has done for Indian country. In Washington, Ali Bice, Cronkite News.
from misspelling your name on your drink order to long waits for tech support. Bad customer service is all around us. Coming up on Cronkite News, how one company is using empathy to keep you happy. Plus, how parents of measure level of involvement and how it impacts the child's performance. Crawling robots, a shower shirt, and wearable pepper spray. Some new inventions get showcased in the halls of Congress. Five terms in the Senate, three terms in the House, two figureheads of Arizona politics, one debate before Election Day. Arizona PBS and the Arizona Republic bring you the 2016 U.S. Senate debate for the state of Arizona. Republican Senator John McCain and Democratic Representative Ann Kirkpatrick face-to-face -face on the future of our state, our nation, our world. McCain versus Kirkpatrick, the 2016 U.S. Senate debate for the state of Arizona, Monday, October 10th at 7 p.m. here on Arizona PBS. Discover so much more at azpbs.org slash schedule, where it's easier than ever to find out what's on Arizona PBS. Access interactive digital and printable program guides, repeat times, and full episode descriptions. Watch program previews of best bets for the coming week. Search by title to find your favorite shows. You can even add programs to your calendar and get email reminders when they're about to start. It's easier than ever to find out what's on Arizona PBS. Discover so much more at azpbs.org slash schedule. Higher school grades may be related to how involved parents are at their child's school. The Center for Public Education found two-thirds of teachers surveyed want to see more parent participation. Jesse Canales tells us what parent involvement in education means and what the impact could be. Parents I spoke with say once they got involved in your child's school, it created a community feeling. They say their kids appreciated that and it made them more excited to learn. Learning starts in the classroom, but it does not need to end there. Some teachers say learning at home is just as important as learning in school. Parent involvement is the number one way to go to move your students' achievement. A form of parent involvement is reading with your children, attending school events, or helping them with homework. Anna Dodge, a mother of six children, says she saw a huge improvement from one of her son's grades once she became involved. He went from basically C's to A's and B's. Dodge says what motivates her to get involved is the lack of involvement from her parents. I think had they been, it really would have changed the way I was in school. I wasn't the best student, and I want my children to be what I wasn't. But some parents say getting other parents to attend school events is more complicated than expected. And the other night where they were teaching the parents how to help your child with homework and there was 28 families that showed up out of 796 students that we have total. I was disappointed there. Parent involvement is also important in checking that homework is done and turned in. Dodge says parents shouldn't learn about those zeros just when the report card comes out. I check their grades two to three times a week. If they have missing assignments, I print them out, you know, the list. I make them take it to their teacher get those missing assignments, have their teacher sign off that they brought that to them and bring it back to me. If you don't have time to talk with teachers, you can use several free apps like Parent Student Portal, available for Apple iOS and Android, which can help parents see what tests are coming up, how their kids are doing, and if they truly did their homework. A teacher Zillow said, with more parent involvement, do not only expect higher student grades, but higher school letter grades as well. In the broadcast center, Jessica Nolis, Cronkite News. Arizona is among the worst states for educators, according to an analysis by WalletHub. The personal finance website looked at 16 factors and ranked the states according to how friendly they are toward teachers. Arizona is the worst when it comes to a 10-year change in teacher salaries and the second worst in public school spending per student. Arizona also ranks 47th in median annual salary for teachers, and in terms of school safety, Arizona is ranked 21st. If you are a teacher in Arizona, Cronkite News wants to know what matters to you and your concerns about education today. You can go online to cronkitenews.azpbs.org to fill out our online query and share your story.
We've all had bad customer service, from getting the wrong product in the mail to waiting too long for someone to help you. But one company is hoping to turn that around. Reporter Dana Lewandowski explains how one company is screening their employees on their level of empathy. What I tell our employees is that being right doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you're right. It doesn't matter that you have the experience and you know how things should be done or whatever. It's getting into the world of the customer. Adam Webster, president and one of the co-founders of Rocky Mountain Restoration here in Arizona, takes a different approach to hiring employees. He believes in screening the employees to see if they are core values fit. We're going to be asking a lot of those questions, you know, like, tell me, what is humility? Can you show me when you exceeded expectations? Can you uh, share with me, um, you know, why you think it's important to be positive and fun at work? Webster started the company because he and his partner saw an opportunity to improve customer service within the restoration industry. According to Deloitte, a consulting firm, companies are recognizing that positive customer service is the key for companies to differentiate themselves. 62% of companies are starting to put more money into the customer service aspect of their business. David Lee, an HR consultant from MSS Tech, says that what Rocky Mountain Restoration is doing is definitely the first step. Very successful companies today, the Disney's, the Google's, um, all of them, they're very much focused on a customer-centric strategy, having everybody in their company understand that they're part of the customer experience and making that experience as positive and as uh, astonishing as possible. Lee says not only are larger companies seeing the benefit from using customer-centric strategies, but smaller companies are as well. And then we get from, you know, insurance agents, insurance adjust adjusters, professionals that we work with on that end too, love to refer their customers to us knowing that we take that approach. The customer may not always be right, but treating them with respect leads to repeat business. In Glendale, Dana Lewandowski, Cronkite News. Governor Doug Ducey will lead an Arizona delegation to Canada. He announced today that he will meet with Canadian officials in October in an effort to highlight Arizona's lifestyle and business climate. Ducey tweeted that Arizona already has a strong relationship with Canada, which is the state's second largest trading partner. The delegation will be traveling to Toronto and Montreal. Flagstaff is implementing a new kind of conservation system. Coming up on Cronkite News, how the city is using cameras to track water flow. Plus, fall is here and it's time for pumpkin spice and everything nice. We'll take a look to see if cooler temperatures are on their way. Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon, held Monday, November 21st at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring this year's recipient, award-winning journalist and CBS Evening News anchor, Scott Pelley. The annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. Fridays, it's at Cronkite News, your social sharing connection where you choose the news. Facebook likes and shares, tweets, retweets, and favorites. YouTube views and subscriptions. We're watching you watch us. From our digital home at cronkitenews.azpbs.org to your television, web browser, or mobile device. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Then join us for at Cronkite News, our weekly refresh, each Friday at 5 on Arizona PBS. Well, drone enthusiasts beware, the McDowell Sonoran Preserve is now a no-fly zone for the unmanned aircraft. Scottsdale City Council passed a new ordinance banning hobbyists from flying their drones over the 30,000-acre preserve. The city of Phoenix already bans the use of drones in most of their city parks. Up high in the mountains, snow melts, then flows into streams and rivers. Each drop is important to Arizona's water supply. Cronkite News reporter Sarah Lichterman shows us how this system is being used in Flagstaff to track the watershed. Some years there's more snowpack and snow melt than others on the north face of Mormon Mountain. And now there's a better way of tracking that using time-lapse photography. We set the camera to time-lapse increments and we merely photograph uh, at regular cadences what's happening in the stream. The City of Flagstaff's partnership with SRP's photography system ensures Flagstaff's water supplies will last well into the future. The pictures are, are processed and they are put into digital formats, so every picture has a value. If we can model these conditions every year with this computer model, 
um, with uh, good accuracy, then the model is calibrated to uh, modeling known conditions, and then we can use it to extrapolate scenarios or extrapolate you know, what could happen in the future. Three years ago, the manager of SRP's water measurement department, Lee Esther, created a system that monitors stream flow using time-lapse cameras that provide visual evidence of overall watershed conditions. Three years into photography, what I've seen is wet, dry, and in between. I really don't know what it means, but I know what it looks like. The system in Flagstaff is focused on measuring the Upper Lake Mary watershed that provides over 50% of the water supply to Flagstaff's residents. Over the years, Upper Lake Mary has, has turned into quite a turbid water supply. It's uh, real uh, mucky all the time. Documenting conditions will help Flagstaff adjust their watershed model to forecast water supplies to real-life scenarios. Traditional mesh methods such as precipitation gauges are still very effective. However, photography helps explain data point inconsistencies by providing photographic evidence. Joey, it's a bit windy out here today. What does the rest of the weather look like? Yeah, it looks pretty breezy out there. As you can see right here, these wind speeds, we have 23 miles per hour in Glendale, and it has been going up and down across the rest of the valley. But as we take a look at temperatures, across we can see that we have 82 degrees that was in Casa Grande and the rest of the valley it's showing up in the mid 80s or higher 80s and lower 90s and also when we take a look at the southeastern part of our state you can see that there's some precipitation that's going across the state which is why we're going to see some scattered showers uh, in areas like Mesa and Chandler perhaps and as we take a look at tomorrow morning 6 a.m. you'll see that there's 90 degrees at that time. It's going to be thick clouds and light winds coming out at 5 to 13 miles an hour. And as we take a look at your forecast, you can see right here that on Tuesday there's a 20% chance of storms, even though it's going to be 93 degrees. Wednesday we get a break, and by Thursday, scattered showers may be around in the valley, but at least we have some low temperatures there. Joey Carrera, Cronkite Weather. The gadgets were cool, but the message was serious. Inventors from across the United States, including a startup from Phoenix, came to Washington to talk about how patents can help new ideas remedy modern day problems. That was the focus of a Congressional Invention Caucus meeting in Washington, D.C. Reporter Sabella Scalise has the story. Robots, children's toys, a malaria detector, and wearable pepper spray were just some of the inventions brought to show the capabilities of new ideas. Because there is nothing that is more important to the long-term economic growth of our, of our country than innovation, and nothing more important to innovation than a patent system that works. The hospital communication application, SOS, began in Maricopa Medical Center. The creator said he hopes to expand nationally, and this could not be done without a patent. In between shift changes, that's when most of the errors um, in healthcare occur. SOS uh, solves the problem of patient handoff. The creator of the shower shirt said her first patent application was denied. But after a second try, she is now able to market a product she has a personal connection with. I had gone through breast cancer and um, had a bilateral mastectomy and had post-surgical drains. I quickly realized there was no product to protect me while showering, literally. Uh, I got in the shower with a trash bag. For other inventors, getting eyes on their research is just as rewarding. And uh, more people know about us, know about our robots, that means uh, we will possibly have future impact on the, on the academia, on the market, on the world. This was the first event held by the Senate for the New Invention Caucus. Its mission is to provide a platform for new ideas and inventors to communicate with lawmakers. In Washington, D.C., Sabella Scalise, Cronkite News. The sports world lost a pioneer yesterday. Coming up on Cronkite News, we'll take a look back at Arnold Palmer's storied career and his connection to Arizona. The confidence to lead our country. This isn't reality television. I feel like Hamilton reached out from history and wouldn't let me go until I told his story. I make no apology for my actions. I would do the same again. How we come so far and yet have so far to go. Right there, coming up.
in 1920s Melbourne. Careful with the hand luggage. My pistol's in there somewhere and it may still be loaded. Franny Fisher is a detective. Things could get interesting around here. Thought they already were. Who isn't afraid to live a little. I hope you're not concealing a dangerous weapon under that skirt. I'm concealing a lot of things. Why do you think you could just run off on your own? Because I'm carrying a gun. The irresistible series, Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries. Saturday night at 10 on Arizona PBS. Golf legend Arnold Palmer died yesterday at the age of 87 following a 52-year career of success on and off the green. In Arizona, Palmer's company designed five golf courses, three in the Valley, one in Yuma, and one in Tucson. Reporter Christina Vicario visited two of those courses as the Valley golf pros remember the man nicknamed the King. Arnold Palmer may be gone, but his impact on golf around the world and here in Phoenix endures. Three of his 62 career PGA Tour wins came here in Phoenix. In fact, he is the only golfer to win three straight Phoenix Opens from 1961 to 1963. I think he's left an imprint on every golfer's life. You know, um, anybody that's, that's a golfer knows who Arnie, Arnold Palmer is. Not only did Arnold Palmer leave his lasting legacy in the golf world, but he also left a legacy here in Arizona with the golf courses he designed. When you have a Palmer signature golf course, people flock to that golf course. And it's got his touches on it, and everybody respects his touch. The legacy he leaves behind, all the golf courses, um, just the way he interacted with people um, is huge. And I know he touched everybody in Arizona. The Palmer Signature Course at the JW Marriott Wildfire Golf Club in North Phoenix is one of five courses in the state Arnold Palmer's company designed. According to Barden, Palmer tailored his courses here to how he liked to hit the ball. Arnold Palmer played a specific shot. Um, he played a, a right to left draw. His holes been right to left. And that was, you know, he, he liked to hit a draw, so he, he designed his golf course to what he, what he liked to hit. His architecture, uh, if you come out and play the Wildfire Palmer course, it's, it's really amazing. It, it will really give you a, an aspect of what desert golf is and in a unique way that only Palmer could do. Flags at Starfire, another of Palmer's Arizona courses, were flying at half mass Monday in memory of one of the greatest golfers to ever play the game. In Phoenix, I'm Christina Vicario, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on the Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton joins us in studio. That's Monday at 5.30. And then join us again at 8 and 10.30 after the presidential debate. For full analysis right here on Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour special live coverage of the first presidential debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. That's Monday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News this evening. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Hi, I'm Ted Simons. Debate season is here. Watch national coverage of the presidential debate on the PBS NewsHour at 6. Then join me at 8 for a special edition of Arizona Horizon. Find out the key takeaways for our state. This election season will help you find more meaning by presenting the issues that matter to you closer to home. Don't miss Arizona Horizon's 2016 debate special. Tonight at 8 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Tickets are now available for the 